Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the third round of Goodreads Readers Also Enjoyed. This time we're going to be doing it a little differently because instead of doing romance like I've done for the past two rounds, we're going to be doing thrillers this time, which hopefully will add some variety to this series. So the three thrillers that I have chosen to, I don't know, hopefully find some new gems from are The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. This is a book that I read, I think, last year and really enjoyed. It was also, I believe, the winner for the Goodreads Choice Awards for Thriller in 2019. The next choice is an all-time favorite of mine. It is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Really excited to see if I can find a book that is similar at all to this or gives me similar vibes. So we're going to see that today. And then we also have The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. Wasn't sure if this was an author that was going to work for me. In fact, I haven't loved all of his books, but this one really, really spoke to me. These are all five-star thrillers, by the way. Hopefully I can find some five-star thrillers from this video. So without further ado, let's get screen recording and let's get on Goodreads and find some new thrillers for me to try. So the first thriller that I am excited to find hopefully a new fave from is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I don't know. I'm wondering if it's just going to be popular thrillers for this one or if it's going to be some variety. Okay. First off the bat, The Family Upstairs is one that I've heard very mixed things about, so I'm curious to see if that could potentially be a winner. These other two books I have read and I liked to varying degrees, so we're going to put this one up here for now and see if we can find anything else good. When the Crawdads Sing, I think it's just up here because it's super popular. Same with American Dirt, neither of which I believe are thrillers in any regard, so those are not going to work for this video. Same with Daisy Jones and the Six. I, I tried The Whisper Man, it didn't work for me. I've already read Anonymous Girl. There's not a whole lot here to choose from, which is sort of <laughs> frustrating. Mostly just Lisa Jewell books. So I guess we're going to go with Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Actually, you know what? I take that back. Let's look at the two next to each other and see which one has better ratings and which my friends liked more and maybe that'll help guide us. So this one has a 4.03. I don't know. Hopefully my friends liked this one or hopefully my friends liked any of these. The Family Upstairs has a lower rating at 3.98 stars. Gabby didn't like it. I feel like Gabby and I have kind of similar taste in thrillers. Elias didn't like it. Okay, so that one... Mm, Let's see. Okay. People like Chelsea liked this one and gave it four stars. So that's a potential. And Gabby liked this one. Okay. So we're going to go with Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I'm actually glad that I pulled that one up and uh, didn't just stick with Family Upstairs because that one doesn't seem like the best. The next one is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. A classic. And I'm wondering if other like classic thrillers are going to pop up. Okay. We've got The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And I'm kind of noticing a trend with looking up popular thrillers. It might just be popular thrillers or it could be all thrillers. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm not seeing a lot of recommendations that are also thrillers. Like The Lovely Bones to me is more of a literary fiction kind of pick. And The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I definitely wouldn't call mystery thriller. The Help is also not a thriller unless you find white saviorism scary, which I guess kind of is. I don't know. Maybe Big Little Lies. I have not read that book and I know a lot of people enjoy it. So that's a potential... But again, The Hunger Games. Like, all right, Fifty Shades and Twilight. This is, these are interesting recommendations. All right, so we're gonna go with either The Girl on the Train or Big Little Lies. The Girl on the Train, I feel like, was a sort of contentious pick. It's kind of an older, I don't know, thriller pick. And I know a lot of people didn't like this. <laughs> Big Little Lies, I feel like, is a more universally loved book. Wow, this has 4.27. I feel like that's a really high rating for thrillers. I feel like we might have to go with this one. Okay, so then she was gone in Big Little Lies. Those are the two that we're going with for right now. I'm happy with these decisions so far. I don't know much about the plot of either of those, and that's kind of how I'm going to stay. So I'm happy. I'm happy with what we're doing so far. Let's see if The Kind Worth Killing conjures some more thrillery choices so I'm not forced to just pick the one thriller recommended from this. Okay, let's see. Okay, um, cows. Eh, okay, it kind of looks like it could be a thriller, but I am not going to do that. Are we? Um, okay, scrolling right along. We also have The Family Upstairs recommended off of this one, so that's a good sign, I think, maybe. Uh, no, because we didn't pick that one. We picked the other Lisa Joel book, but... These are at least thriller choices, which I'm appreciating. I've never heard of this book, so I'm gonna open this one. Little Secrets. I don't know, man. This is not going exactly how I had anticipated. I thought I was gonna have just like a wealth, a wealth of thriller options. Her children have a deadly secret. Can she uncover it before the police do? This has 4.08 stars, and it doesn't really look like anybody that I know has read this book. I think generally speaking, some people love it. Some people hate it. And then let's look at Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. This one, mm, I don't know. It's tough because the first thing that I'm seeing is married to her college sweetheart. I don't tend to really love super domestic thrillers, except for Gone Girl. Gone Girl was an exception. So 
Shit, okay, I think we're gonna go with this one because it seems like all of my friends liked it and yet I have somehow heard nothing about it. Gabby liked it. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're doing Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. We're doing another book that I cannot remember the name of and then we're doing Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. Wow, this was a terrible intro. Thank you for watching it. Uh, but we are gonna go ahead and read these three thrillers. I feel like I'm Kayla saying three thrillers so many times. But now it's time for the vlog portion of this video. We are going to see how these choices kind of match up to the books that Goodreads readers also enjoy. We're gonna go ahead and read those three books that we just picked out. Okay, it's gonna be a good time. I'm excited for it. Hope you're excited too. Okay, so I look super greasy. We're not gonna talk about it. I am about, I wanna say 15% into Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, and I'm actually really enjoying this. I really didn't know what to expect going in. I think the intro to this video could probably let you know. I had no idea what to expect going into any of these books, and I didn't really know anything about the synopsis, like literally know nothing about these books, which is kind of cool. I don't like that. I like not knowing what to expect for the thriller, but this one is about a girl, I think her name's Ellie, who went missing quite a few years ago. She told her mom she was going to the library and then she just disappeared. Her mom, Laurel, has been searching for her ever since and there's been kind of a break in the case. They found Ellie's clothing and backpack years later. I think they found human remains. I'm not quite sure, but we're getting kind of a dual timeline, dual POV thing. We're getting Ellie in the past and kind of finding out about her life and why she might have like run away because it doesn't seem like she was kidnapped or anything. And then we're also getting Laurel's point of view in the present as she is trying to figure out what happened to her daughter. So I'm liking it. I like a dual POV, dual timeline sort of thriller story. I don't even know what I'm hoping, honestly. I'm just having a good time listening to this. I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but I'm liking it. There's already been some things like in the first part of this book that have really got me suspicious and I'm sure that they're trying to like throw me off of the scent of what's happening because it's the beginning of the book, but the tutor that Ellie has is so creepy and I'm wondering if she had something to do with Ellie's disappearance. So that's like just a first thought, I guess, and I'm sure that they throw that out there or the author throws that out there to get you to think maybe as her, but there's gonna be a lot more to it, so I don't know. I'm excited. I'll get back to you guys probably when I'm like 50% in. Hopefully my feelings don't change. Hopefully I'm just like super intrigued still <laughs> as things go on. Okay, so... <laughs> Nugget insists on being right here, but I thought we could talk about Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell because I'm like 45-50% into this book and things are getting twisty. So our main character, Laurel, is dating this guy that she met at a coffee shop, I think. She like kind of unexpectedly went. She shares a piece of cake with him and they kind of start dating from there and it's kind of a whirlwind romance. And the guy that she's dating has a daughter named Poppy and Poppy reminds Laurel a lot of her daughter, Ellie, the one that disappeared and died. Their interactions are so interesting both Laurel and Poppy's interactions and Poppy's interactions with her father. It's just, it's so interesting and you get kind of a skeevy feeling. Not that like he's a creep or anything, but Poppy is just creepy herself. Like she seems older than she really is and you're kind of wondering like what her identity is and you find out that Poppy's mom was Ellie's tutor, the creepy tutor, who I was like, I think that's the, the murderer. So I think that these two families are more intertwined than we're led to believe at the beginning, but I also think they're trying to kind of like throw us off the scent of like what's actually going on. So I really don't know if the perceived creepiness of Poppy is just supposed to throw you off from something that like you are missing. But I just left off on the scene where Laurel goes to dinner with her new boyfriend <clears throat> and her living daughter and son. They're like partners. Oh, and her ex-husband and her ex-husband's partner. It's a big family dinner, essentially. She gets a call from her son's wife after the dinner. She's like, I just want to let you know that I think your new boyfriend's creepy and I get really bad feelings about him. He has bad aura about him. And Laurel doesn't really like her son's girlfriend. So she's like, whatever. But I agree. I think the guy's kind of weird. And I wonder if he's had anything to do with Ellie's disappearance or like what the story is there. Because again, he was with the tutor at one point to have Poppy. I don't know. This might all be sounding like very convoluted because there's so many characters, but I'm very intrigued and I kind of feel like I'm going to hate the ending of this. I don't know. I just have a feeling that it's not going to be satisfying to me, but I'm intrigued enough to where I feel like I won't care. There are so many thrillers I feel like I pick up that are just so fucking dull and you're just plotting along and then they give you a plot twist in the last chapter or like the epilogue and you're expected to just be like, oh, okay. The latest Samantha Downing book, the one where she's got like a shovel on the cover, hated that. Thought it was fucking terrible. It was just, it was unentertaining and then you get like one plot twist at the end and that's supposed to just make up for the fact that I had to read 250 pages of nothing. This is not like that, which I am, you know, at least appreciating. So fingers crossed it keeps going well. I am just so curious to see if there is anything there with Poppy. 
or with the with with the poppy stad with poppy stad i'll keep you guys posted uh, i'm gonna keep reading okay wow i just finished then she was gone by lisa jewel and i actually really really enjoyed this i had no idea what to expect going in because i feel like i've heard very mixed things from lisa jewel and i don't think i've ever really seen any of my favorite youtubers talk about her in a super positive light so i just like wasn't expecting much from this book but i was pleasantly surprised at how good this was not gonna lie i'm not sure that i loved the ending of the book i think it was is interesting and I feel like I should have definitely seen some things coming but I can appreciate what it did and I think it was not a disappointing ending. I guess I could be less vague. Let's just get into the spoilers. So essentially Laurel's daughter Ellie is Poppy's mother and she was kidnapped by Noelle, held captive and forcibly impregnated and then just like left to die. So that was horrible to read about and also just like reading about Noelle's like state of mind as she was doing this and then also reading about Floyd, the dad who I keep forgetting his name conveniently, getting his point of view at the end of the book too was pretty heartbreaking because you know that he really cared about his daughter who like isn't really technically his daughter. I don't know, it was just interesting. I liked that the ending was hopeful and I think that's probably what is making this book particularly impactful for me but I thought it was pretty well done. Like I think it set out to do certain things, I think it accomplished all of those things and it definitely took me by surprise. Like I said, I'm kind of dumb and I feel like I should have seen these things coming because whenever like the, the first reveal happened and we found out that Ellie was Poppy's mom I was like okay that kind of makes sense I get it but I really enjoyed this I think I'm gonna give it four stars I think if you're looking for a thrilling fast-paced thriller this is definitely one that you should give a try I feel like if you're watching me talk about it then you've probably already seen it because I'm doing spoilers but anyway I thoroughly enjoyed this totally understand why people like this one if you guys have read this book please let me know in the comments down below if you have other Lisa Jewel recommendations for me because I feel like this one whenever I looked at the reviews had really good reviews but some of her other books don't and I'm wondering if this was just like an odd book out like this just happened to be the one good book that she has. I know that was kind of the same way with Peter Swanson like I really liked one of his books but most of his I'm just kind of like yeah about so anyway super super good enjoyed this I think next I'm gonna go for a big little lies I think I'm just gonna do it in order which I never never do in these vlogs but um yeah let's do big little lies next this is another one that I have an audio so it'll probably be a quick read I'm just excited to know what the hype is about this book I feel like so many people have read it pretty much everybody has I feel like I'm very late to the party and I would love to be able to watch the show maybe with Hayden because he likes that sort of thing so anyway I'm gonna get started I will let you guys know once I am a little bit into the book what I'm thinking about it and uh, what it's about because I really have no idea. Okay, don't mind me and this absolutely horrible lighting, but I spoke way too soon. I was so excited to give this book a try, but I don't think I can do it. Domestic mystery mama drama bullshit. I, ju I don't not for me and it's weird too because I kind of don't mind rich people problem books like I think they can be entertaining but I don't think I like it in this setting when it's women competing through their children it's weird and I just I'm not really here for it also the tv adaptation is so much better I actually decided after I read like the first 15 percent of this book that I was going to watch the first episode of the show and see if maybe that would be a better format for me the tv show set in Monterey California and it's got Reese Witherspoon so yes it's better it's better than the book I'm just gonna put it out there. I don't know, maybe the ending is different. I don't really care. If I want to consume the story, I think I'm gonna do it via the TV show where the visuals are interesting and I think it'll be more intriguing. I don't know, don't shit on me. I, I mean, feel free to shit on me. I just, I don't think I can do this. This is not really my preferred kind of book, so. That was a really long-winded way of saying that I'm only gonna be reading two books for this video. I'm sorry, but you know, you win some, you lose some. And I'm sure that this was great a few years ago when it came out, but I think the hype just kind of, it, it's not, it's not doing it for me. So let's move on to, is it Little, Little Lies? This book by Jennifer Hillier. We're gonna get onto it. We're gonna get reading. I think in the last clip I called this book Little Lies. It's actually Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier and I'm enjoying it. I am, let's see, 18% into this book and I don't know where it's going but I'm sort of here for it. So this story is about our heroine Marin or Marin, I don't know how we're saying it. I'm gonna go with Marin and she lives in Seattle with her husband and her son who I think is like five-ish maybe. The book opens up and she is in, you know, town trying to like get Christmas presents for people with her son and he's kind of like annoying her and she loses sight of him for just a few minutes or a few seconds really and he is abducted. So so that's how the story starts out. And now we're taking a present day about a year later where she is still trying to figure
figure out where her son went kind of just dealing with the grief and coping with the loss of her son she's going to support group she is trying to get her life together but it's obviously not super successful because something really traumatic has happened to her and she finds out from the private investigator that she hired behind her husband's back that her husband is actually cheating on her and that apparently is going to I think become a big part of the story so I actually don't really know if the story is going to be about her trying to find her son if that is going to be a big part of the story or if that is just sort of like the opener for the story but I know that she for sure is going to do something about her husband cheating on her so interesting I know I said for Big Little Lies that I don't really care about mama drama and that is absolutely true but this is less like mom group living through my child and more like true crime I guess so I'm liking that I'm curious to see where things go I'm wondering if it's gonna get kind of like gone girlish but I just wonder if Marin is going to take things into her own hands and I don't know I I don't know she's angry at the moment so I'd love to see how that manifests I love that for her I'll update you guys once I get a little farther maybe 50% and uh yeah I don't know so far so good okay so I am like 60% into Little Secrets and it is really going places I didn't expect and I'm enjoying it I didn't know at the beginning kind of where the story was gonna go we found out that Marin's husband has been cheating on her and she is trying to like rectify the situation and for some reason I thought that the links that Marin was gonna go to to like keep her man like I thought that was going to be the story but it is definitely not that and I kind of like what's happening I do feel like there's some things that could happen going forward that could impact my enjoyment but as of right now I kind of like the way the story is taking shape so let me kind of break things down essentially um we're getting the pov of marin's husband's mistress kenzie and it is fascinating understanding kenzie's background and why she's even with marin's husband in the first place and it's interesting to see how calculating both marin and kenzie are and i'm wondering if they're going to like have to battle it out at some point or if they'll ever like i mean they've met before but i wonder if they're like gonna meet meet you know what i mean and like have some sort of confrontation also found out a little bit more about marin's past we get hints of her talking to one of her friends her like male friends at the beginning of the book and you don't really understand who he is until the story goes on and some of the choices that she makes after talking to her like guy best friend are super interesting also her guy best friend's background is super super interesting things are things are interesting the only thing i think that could make this story unenjoyable is if we find out that i don't know both of the women are going to like really fight for this garbage man that's an insult to garbage men to be honest to say that this man is a waste of space there we go it's like on the one hand i kind of like the idea of two women trying to outsmart each other but on the other hand for a guy who's not worth it it doesn't really like i don't think i would like that but i also just don't know where the story is going to go and i also don't know how the son is going to play into this like i wonder if kenzie had anything to do with the disappearance or where that storyline is gonna go I would assume that it would go somewhere I feel like it would be kind of weird to have that be the setup of this book and then like go nowhere with it but I don't know a lot a lot of uh, a lot of things going on and I will say I think this is also sort of proof that I don't necessarily hate all like I said domestic thrillers I just need something more than like children's playgroup drama I don't know that's where I'm at I'll update you guys when I'm done with this book I know this vlog is like kind of short and sort of boring but I'm reading thrillers and I'm actually having a good time so finished Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier and I really enjoyed it I think I'm gonna give this book four stars it definitely took me by surprise there were twists that I definitely didn't see coming and in hindsight after finishing it I don't think the twists were really out there and in some ways this actually kind of reminds me of a book that I really disliked but I think a couple of things that occurred at the very end of this book made it just a really good read for me so let me see if I can try to unfold some of what happened that made it such a memorable read. So essentially I should have probably seen this coming but Sal aka Marin's like child not childhood friend but college friend who she dated and is now just like good friends with he is the one that was helping Kenzie scam men for money which is interesting. He's also the one that kidnapped Marin's son who is alive at the end of the story which I actually really liked and that's something that I know is kind of unrealistic but something that makes me happy when I see the kids not die in stories. Essentially he was kidnapping the son so that he could get a reward for kidnapping. I think Marin's husband like promised a reward to whoever would come forward with information and so Sal hatched the scheme to essentially scam them out of money so that he could like pay off some of his debts. On top of that he just has this sort of obsession with Marin and he tried to basically break up their marriage so him trying to kind of scam rich men with Kenzie was very targeted. He definitely picked out this guy for Kenzie even though Kenzie's like oh no I was like the one who was the architect of this. No it was very much Sal. I should have seen it coming but the way that it was revealed I thought was really clever 
before and I don't know I just didn't see it coming so I had a really good time reading it. What made this a four star read and not a two star read because it honestly kind of could have gone either way at the end was the fact that even though Lauren was upset with Kenzie for like sleeping with her husband she ends up giving like the reward money or the amount of the reward money that she was going to give whoever saved her son or whatever she gave that money to Kenzie because Kenzie at one point finds her son. I don't know he was going to be found anyway but Kenzie kind of comforted him as there was like this police raid kind of situation going on so I thought it was really sweet that Maren was like you know what I'm just gonna let bygones be bygones and I'm gonna give you the reward money for like helping my son because that was really cool of you. I liked that it didn't demonize uh Kenzie for basically scamming this guy so I thought that was pretty cool and I like that I think I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure at the end there is sort of this exchange where Maren finds out why Kenzie was scamming her husband and she's like you know what honestly that makes sense I'm kind of okay with that but also while that ends well I enjoyed that book and I am glad that I picked it up because I definitely would not have picked it up on my own it wasn't something that was on my radar previously that's pretty much it those are the three books that I read for this video so let's kind of review them and review the books that I picked them based off of so we have first up The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides Michaelides however you want to say that and then we have Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell I liked both of these books quite a bit. I think that She Was Gone was really, really well crafted. I can't remember what I said I was going to rate this four or five stars, but it was one that took me by surprise and it was super heartbreaking. And honestly, I do think that if you liked The Silent Patient, you would probably like this one as well. I mean, definitely trigger warning for, you know, the abuse and stuff, but I thought it was really good. Then we have Gone Girl and Big Little Lies. This was one that I definitely understand, like, why the connection was made. The one element that is present in Big Little Lies that isn't present in Gone Girl isn't something that I personally really like. Something about parents living through their children is just not something that I really want to read about, so that's why I ultimately DNF'd that book. I haven't really carried on with the HBO Max show, but it is something that I would like to carry on with. I don't think I said it in the clip, but I kind of alluded to it. I like that the show is set in Monterey, California. It is one of the places in California that I absolutely adore. Um, I visited California a while ago and like didn't super super love it, but Monterey was somewhere that I loved, so just getting to like be in that setting even in a television show I think would be fun, so I'll probably dive into that, I don't know, later this year. The book just wasn't really for me. And then lastly we have The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson and Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. I don't know, honestly, okay, they're completely different books, but I do think that if you liked The Kind Worth Killing you should pick up Little Secrets. I thought it was good. I don't know that you will have like one-to-one -one enjoyment necessarily, kind of depends obviously on like the tropes and the twists that you're into in thrillers, but I liked it a lot and I can definitely see why they were recommended. I would say for this one it's funny because I felt like the recommendations I was given were kind of few and far between just because a lot of the recommendations like off of each thriller were books that weren't even thrillers. However, the thrillers that I did pick up based off of the thrillers that I enjoyed were very similar. So in this case, I definitely think that the Goodreads readers also enjoyed function definitely worked out. So overall, I had a really good time doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books, if you enjoyed any of these books, and also if you want to see another version of me doing this. I definitely took you guys' recommendation for this one and did thrillers, but I would love to know if you guys want to see more romance ones or maybe like fantasy. Yeah, just let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much and until next time.